Last week, I think I got into John chapter 17, the, actually the Lord's high priestly prayer to his heavenly Father. I think we got down to around verse 3 or 4. I want to try to continue on with that. The Lord getting ready to go to the cross and he's praying to his heavenly Father. I want to begin about uh, verse 4. It says, I have glorified thee on earth, and I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me. And they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. And they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you tonight, Lord. Help us to glorify uh, you tonight, Lord, as, as the precious Son, Jesus Christ, glorified your name, let us lift up his name uh, tonight, Lord, and continue to glorify you, Lord, and help us to grow in the grace and knowledge of him, our precious Savior. Thank you for that blood on Calvary's cross. We prayed tonight for those who are uh, hurting tonight, those who are mourning for uh, people they've lost, uh, people who are struggling, Lord, and, and uh, people less fortunate than we are, Lord, we lift them up to you tonight. We'll thank you for your tender mercies and love and that precious bud. In Jesus' name we pray. Hold me up tonight, Lord, I pray. Amen. <coughs> the Lord said, I have glorified thee on earth. And, uh, of course, God was glorified himself in creation. Uh, we're not to worship the creation, but the creator. When I look at creation, I've... I try to give glory and, and remember to give glory to the creator, not the creation. The creation is just uh, glorifies our Father. The Bible says in Psalms 19.1 that the heavens declare the glory of God and the earth. The firmament showeth his handiwork. So everything gives glory to God. Uh, he was glorified in Israel in their battles. Uh, Exodus 15, 6 says, Thy right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Uh, who, if, if God is for you, who can be against you? Uh, our nation sometimes takes a kind of a scary position in regards to Israel. We need to always support Israel because God is always going to stick with Israel. And God blesses those that bless Abraham, the Bible says. So we want to continue that. Exodus 15, 6, thy right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. And, and now the Father is glorified in the Son. Hebrews 1, 3 says, who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. My, my, my. God manifest in the flesh. The Bible says a word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Who being the brightness of his glory, Hebrews 1, 3, and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he hath by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. The Son glorified the Father in His person. He glorified the, uh, the Father in everything that He did. Uh, remember in the early verse, that He says, You've glorified me with the glory that I had with Thee. If you remember that Jesus Christ was in the bosom of the Father. He has always been with the Father. He, our Lord Jesus Christ is eternal. And uh, Brother... Greg Eastep went into some things that is, that is 
pretty interesting about the Trinity wasn't spoken of much in the Old Testament. That don't mean it wasn't there and, and that, that, that God separated that, tri uh, that Trinity so that, that he could indwell. He would cut that body of flesh loose and he'd be able to indwell a holy a soul with his Holy Spirit and he could have commune, have communion with that soul. But that body of flesh is corrupt. We, that's why we get a new body and, and, and I don't want to go into uh, that tonight, but Jesus Christ glorified the Father in his miracles. Uh, his miracles were there to demonstrate his power. Israel, God always dealt with the nation of Israel through signs and wonders. And in his miracles, it says in Matthew 9, 8, but when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God. Uh, which had given such power unto men. The Son uh, glorified the Father in his holiness, in his holy life that he led. Mm. It says in Colossians 2.15, And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Our Lord, he led a sinless life. Remember, uh, the heavens opened when, when the Lord was baptized and, and God, the, the, the Father of the heavens opened. And he said, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So Jesus Christ brought glory to his Father by his sinful, sinless rather, sinless life. He became sin who knew no sin. Don't say he became a sinner. He became sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So he triumphed over sin. What a, a wonderful thing. He was able to live it. He was able to live the life that I couldn't live. He was able to live sinless and holy. I can't do that. I have to, uh, my righteousness must come from his holy living and his holy life and his holy sacrifice. Bible says our lives are hid with Christ in God. I'm thankful for that. In verse 4 here it says that the Lord said, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And he's speaking of his hour of approaching a crucifixion on the cross. Uh, his works, one of the, I remember uh, reading a verse where it said that he came to destroy the works of the devil. And he did that. By living a holy life. The devil didn't have any power over him. Hebrews 10, 7. It says, Then said I, Lo, in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will, O God. He did his Father's will. Remember, he said, Not, not my will, but thine be done. And that's hard for us each day, trying to submit our will to God's will. Paul couldn't do it. Paul said, uh, to will is present with me. Man, I want to do it right. I want to live right. I want to live sinless. He said, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Paul couldn't do it in the flesh. You can't do it in the flesh. I can't do it in the flesh. David said, I will cry unto God most high, unto God who performeth all things for me. We have to yield to God and allow him to do the performing for us. When uh, Jesus Christ was 12 years old, he made this comment, Luke 2, 49, said, Wist ye not that I must be about my Father's business? We should be about our Heavenly Father's business. We're the church. If anyone is going to hear the gospel, they're going to hear it from the church. They're, if they don't hear it from you and from me, and, and where are they going to hear it? Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness. And what's that, fear or trembling? Meekness and fear. John 4:34, uh, Jesus said, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. All right, in John 19, 30, uh, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head, and he gave up the ghost. It's, it's finished. There's no more sacrifice for sin. No more need for sacrifice. That he was sacrificed once for all. 
Our righteousness is found in his. His sacrifice covered my sins. My, uh, this body of flesh nailed to the cross with Jesus Christ. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for it. Psalm 60, uh, 9, 4 says, Then I restored that which I took not away. There was a restoration of mankind to the heavenly Father. Adam lost it. Jesus Christ got it back. He was called the second Adam or the last Adam because no one on walked this earth with the image of God from the time Adam lost it until Jesus Christ showed up. By the washing of the Bible says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Wow, that's a restoration. Renewing of the Holy Ghost, washing of regeneration, we're regenerated. Over in Psalms 22, it talks about a generation for his seed. Who generates the seed? Jesus Christ does. He's the firstborn among many brethren. Isaiah 53, 12. The Bible says, Therefore will I divide, divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. He was numbered with the transgressors. We see that in different uh, places through Scripture. Uh, he went down to be baptized in Jordan, and John said, hey, man, I'd, uh, I need to be baptized you. You don't need to be baptized. And Jesus kind of, so many words, said, I'm, I'm with the sinners. I'm one of, everything that a sinner goes through, I want to go through that. Numbered with a transgressor. On the cross, between two thieves, he was numbered with the transgressors. Here in verse 5 of our text, it says, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Now this verse back through eternity uh, with the Lord's heavenly position. It looks back there, his heavenly position in the Trinity. Jesus Christ is eternal in the Godhead. John 1, 18 says, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So we see positionally Jesus Christ was in God from eternity. Earlier he had declared that he came forth from the Father. John 1, 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Then it says in verse 14, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians uh, 8, 9, it says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Hebrews 1, 3 says, Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power which he had by himself purged, when he had by himself purged our sins, set down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Second Corinthians 4.4, 4, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, there it is again, should shine unto them. Colossians 1.15, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn among every creature. Uh, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and vis invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. 
My, my, my. It appears from verse 24 that the disciples uh, will see his glory and see this glory that the Lord had with the Father. Uh, that verse 17, 24 says, Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. He submitted his glory and took on the form of a servant. He didn't have to do that. Who would, who, who would do that? Leave his exalted position. Leave the, that throne of glory and come and be, allow himself to be humiliated and spit on and lied about and crucified, nailed to a cross. That's a guy who has that kind of love. Who has that kind of love? Acts 2. 36 says, therefore, let all the house of Israel, all the house of Israel, know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. That's a context in Acts 2. The whole context there is the nation of Israel. They'd crucified their Messiah. And, and I know uh, a lot of folks... Uh, We'll use Acts 2.38 as a plan of salvation for a lost sinner, but Acts 2.38 has to do with the nation of Israel that had just crucified their Savior. Here in verse 36, it says, Let all the house of Israel know assuredly. That's talking to the Jew. You're not the house of Israel. Then it says, it says, Repent and be baptized. They said, What are we going to do now that we've crucified our Messiah? He said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Philippians 2, 9, wherefore God hath high also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Verse 10, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Although he was God, he took on the form of a servant. Philippians 2, 6, who being the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He was God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. I, I showed that verse to a Jehovah Witness, came into my house one day, him and his partner, and, and I said, what do you do with that verse? And the, the young guy said, the other one said, is that in the Bible? I said, yeah, I think it is. See you later. They teach that, that Jesus Christ was not God. He was like a lesser God, God B or God number two, you know. No. He was equal. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Here's the, uh, the, another verse of, about that. Psalms 110 and verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies a footstool. One Lord's calling the other one Lord. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Ephesians 1, 17, the Bible says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe 
according to the working of his mighty power. Whose power? His power, not our power. Which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. In Revelation 5.11 the Bible says, and I beheld, John said, I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said amen and the four and twenty elders fell down and worshiped him that liveth forever and ever. <clears throat> That's our glorious savior. That's our precious Jesus Christ. It says in John 6, 37, <clears throat> All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. How's that for a little verse on eternal security? For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. He said that was his Father's will. Hey, when I got saved, I'm not going anywhere but heaven. That's it. Not based upon how good I am or how bad I am, but based upon my, my faith in the one who lived the perfect sinless life and sacrificed himself for me. Back to our text in verse 6, John 17, 6, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou, hast gave, which thou gavest me out of the world, Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. This reaffirms what the disciples had spoken in uh, John 16, John 16, 30. They said, Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. All right, now back to our text in John 17 and verse 8. For I have given unto them the words, words, plural. This book has words in it. What's God communicate with man today? With, with words. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. The words, a plural. John 6, 68, the Bible says, Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. You got to watch that crowd will say, well, the Bible teaches this or uh, it, it, it teaches principles and this and that. No, the words of God are from God. I want to know exactly what God said, not what some man thinks he said or thought he might have said or, or believes here's what he really meant. I want to go to God and let the Holy Spirit deal with my heart. 
after I hear exactly what God says about something. Just thought I'd throw that in. All right. These are the words that we are supposed to keep. John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said to him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. Love God, do what God says. Like our principle and are you, if God's against it, so am I. God's against it and you're for it, you're, you've got a bad position. You're in a bad spot, son. If, if, if God's against it and you're for it, you need to rethink your position. Look at the world today. The world, so much the world's against what God is for and they're for what God is against. These are the words that Paul warned us to hold fast. 2 Timothy 1.13, hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. We're, we're to, told to study those words and to search those words. At the end of his ministry, three times the Lord makes a reference to his words, verse 8, verse 14, verse 17. Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the words. That's uh, God inspired the his scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God might be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's why we place a high importance upon the word of God. We don't mess with it. Sometimes it'll take you a while to figure out where it's at because there's so many Varieties out there, and I and that search took me a while. Holy Spirit has borne witness to one text down through the ages for English speaking people that one text that has led more souls to Christ than all the other versions put together is that old 1611. King James Holy Bible. That's why we stick to it. That's our final authority. Say, what if you're wrong, preacher? I'll live with that. At least God knows I have an authority and I've searched it out. And and, and I've, I've chosen the book the Holy Spirit has chosen to use more than all the others put together. When we place a high importance upon the word of God. Jesus Christ was a living word. He was in the bosom of the Father throughout eternity. Philippians 3.10 says that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable to his death. Our Lord will continue on with This chapter, to, the Lord says that, that those that the Father had given him said that they might be with me. See my glory. They may see the glory that I had. Can you imagine the Lord wanting to be with you? I do a message on that. It, it, it's, it's very humbling. To, how, why would the Lord want to spend any time with me? Who am I? Who did that song? Who am I? Who am I? That I stand up and die for. That an old southern gospel song, Sheila. Who am I? But the God, Lord Jesus Christ wants to spend time with those who have loved him reached out to him, he loved them first, and he manifested himself to us. I think I mentioned a few weeks ago, you can, you can get saved and not 
you can know uh, Jesus Christ, but then he has to reveal himself to you. He loves you first and then manifest himself to you. For us, we have to know somebody to love them, but God, he loves us first. Jesus Christ, what a Savior, what a God. And his exalted position in the bosom of the Father. Trinity, I think it's been a while since we preached on the, on the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Three but one. One of the guys, I, I like the way he put it, he, he addressed it sort of like a football. You have that pig skin, that outer covering, that's the body. Then you've got the soul in the same shape. Like that inner tube in a football, the same shape as the football. And there's several scriptures that tell us that. The rich man in hell lift up his eyes. He had eyes in hell, and he sees Lazarus afar off in Abraham's bosom. He t tells Abraham to have Lazarus take the tip of his finger. A soul has a finger. Put it in water. Cool my tongue. A soul has a tongue. And then uh, over... We see that verse where it says, Who there are these under the altar? It says, These are the souls of them that came out of great tribulation. Then what happened? To, the, to them were given white robes. The souls were given white robes. Same shape as the, the body. Then you have the spirit, like the air in a football that fills it up. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. All three, but yet they're just one. Three but one. And I don't want to get in all that tonight, but it's an interesting study. God separated himself. We, we see that God the Father and God the Son, God became a man, took on the form of a servant, left his home in glory. Jesus Christ, and he did it because he loved you. Because he loved me, my Savior died. On the cross was crucified. That's quite a, a prayer, John 17. It's a good study. A holy Savior, Jesus Christ, God. The image, visible image of the invisible God the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Over there in Revelation, he said that had on his forehead, the word of God. Wow. Jesus Christ. Do you love him tonight? We're going to end up a little early. I'm, I'm done. If everyone stand up tonight, God loves you. God wants to draw close to you. God wants to see in, you to see in this chapter the closeness of the Son to the Father. Everything he did was in response to his Father's will. He did all things to please the Father. He said he did only those things that please the Father. How about, how about you and me? Is, is all we do to please the Father? I wish it was. I wish it was. God bless you and thank you for coming out. Know that Jesus Christ loves you and he wants to spend time with you. I don't spend near enough time with him. He'd like you to spend less time with the TV programs and a little more time with him. I'm preaching to myself tonight. He wants to be with you. That they might be with me where I am. Altar's open tonight. Do you have a burden? Won't you come?